Hello everybody, I'm Cadet Wachholz. I'm Cadet Pomerader, and today we're going to be showing you guys how to pack a rock for the field. Alright, so let's start with an overview of what we're going to be packing today. So here we have our wet weather bag, and all this that you're about to see is in the order that we're going to pack it, and we'll explain that to you later. You have your rock, extra uniform top, and bottom, another extra uniform set, your hygiene kit, some foot care, and your wooby, and this is to waterproof your uniform set. Here you have your sleep system, extra pair of boots, your camelback, tan tee, extra socks, underwear, some uh, an MRE extra plastic bags, a poncho, and your wet weather gear. And then here's a rifle cleaning kit and some uh, a warm weather jacket. All right, so what you're gonna start with is you wanna make sure your rock is waterproof. So the first thing you wanna do, open the big pouch of your rock, look inside it. You should, you should see a bunch of black buttons and a zipper. So if your zipper is zipped, here I'll give you, yeah, I'll show you. Right here. And there's the zipper. So if your zipper is zipped, unzip it, unbutton all the buttons, and make it so your your rock is just one big pouch. So start by inserting your waterproof bag into the rock so your main pouch is waterproof. Now we're going to move on to our uniforms. So in order to save space, we're going to roll up the uniforms like you see here. And I'll show you how to do that right now. Take the bottom of the blouse and give yourself about three or four inches of roll on the top and the bottom. So I got the top. Flip it over, got the bottom even, and it should look something like this. Now you're going to take your sleeves and fold them into the middle. Take one side, fold it into the middle, the other side, fold it over. This is what it should look like. Spin it around, start rolling. You have this extra material, pull it over, it should look like this. Now I'm going to show you how to fold your pants. So you take your top pant leg, and you give it a nice 90 degree corner right at the knee. You take your bottom pant leg, and you start to roll it up. You want to make sure you got it nice and tight. And you're going to roll it all the way up to the waistband. Like so. Now you've got this extra material here. That you can pull over. It should look like this. So usually when you pack a uniform set, you obviously have your waterproof bag, but I like to double double up. And you can use these gallon ziplocs. Put your top and bottom in. Once you've gotten all the air out of the bag, it should look like this. So you do the same with your top. Give everything a nice push, and then let's keep going. So here we've got our hygiene kit. And this could also be considered hygiene. We've got foot powder and baby wipes, but you use this pretty often when you're in the field. So instead of putting it towards the bottom, we're going to set it off to the side so it's towards the top.
Now we got our wooby. If you know you're going to be staying in garrison, this is good to have because the barracks, the beds in the barracks don't usually have uh, blankets. If you're not staying in garrison, however, I wouldn't recommend bringing it. Sleep system. Sometimes people prefer to take it out of the bag so you can stuff the sleep system into the nooks and crannies that you've made. But we're going to leave it in. Now I'm going to hand it off to my peer, Cadet Palmer. All right. So the next thing what you're going to pack is your spare set of boots. So you got two boots that look like this, and you're going to want to roll them up so that way they take up as little space as possible. And then you're going to put them together so that way they're nice and compact, like how they come in the box. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to put them on top of your sleeping system. Now what you're going to do is you're going to start putting things that you're going to end up needing sooner in the ruck. So one of those things would be an MRE. Depending on how many you have will depend on where you put them, but if you only have a few you're going to want it more near the top. Now what you got is your undergarments. So you got your panty, you got socks and underwear. And so how you're going to start putting this stuff in your ruck is you're going to roll it. So you're going to take a tan tee and lay it out like so. You're going to fold, fold it into thirds. And tuck the sleeves in. Once you get it into thirds, you're going to take your underwear, lay it on top like so, and then take your socks, and you're going to want to put the openings facing out. Then you can just start rolling it from one end, keep it nice and tight, roll through everything you set on it, and then you can take the socks and just go around the tan tee. This will give you a nice bundle of everything you're going to change into either in the morning or at night. And then you just put it in a Ziploc bag. Now the one thing I find that usually we go through quicker than anything else is socks. So I also like to take an extra pair of socks and you just can roll them up so they're nice and compact. And then you can just use the end of the sock, similar to how we just did, to make a nice compact bundle. And then you just put both of them in a Ziploc bag, and you just make one of these per day you're going to be in the field. You're always going to have some of these near the top of your ruck. So, depending on where you're at, will affect the importance of your cold weather gear. If you're here in Houghton, in the winter, you're gonna to wanna to have some near the top. Now we're gonna get into the top compartment, which is right here on your right. This little bag, it's this little compartment. You're gonna to wanna to put things that, if you need them, you need them like now. Extra bags for waterproofing, for instance. The things you took out of your hygiene kit, which are your baby wipes and your foot powder. and your weapon cleaning kit. Another good thing to put in here would be spare batteries if you have a red lens. That way they're nice and easily accessible. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna seal up the wet weather bag. And so what you wanna do is you just wanna get the material, grab a nice hold of it, and twist it. Once you're done with that, there's a nice cord attached to it and you're going to wrap it around the neck you made. Once you've wrapped it around the, once you've wrapped it around the neck, what you're going to do is you're just going to tie a nice knot like you're tying your shoes. You don't want to use anything too complex so that way you can get in there. All right, so what we have left, you got your poncho and your wet weather equipment. 
So what you can do is you can just end your camel back. So what you can do right now is you're just going to take and buckle your rock. So now, in the Arctic War, in the first Arctic Warriors Battalion, our SOP is you put, which is standard operating procedure, is you put all your wet weather gear in your white, right sustainment pouch. So we got your wet weather bottoms. Your wet weather top. And your poncho. They can all fit in there. And what this is this allows you to do is if your buddy's pulling security and it starts to rain, you can waterproof the ruck for them and also get them their wet weather gear without going through the whole ruck. You got another sustainment pouch on the left. You can put an MRE there, spare ammunition, anything you need to get to quick. And so finally we got your camel back. And you're going to want to put this on top of your ruck because you're going to need to tap off on water whenever you step. So you're just going to want to unbuckle the straps on your camel back. And you're just going to loop them through miscellaneous straps on your ruck. Finally, one last thing is when you're packing your ruck, often you're going to get loose straps like so. And so if you notice you got these little scrunchy things, these are going to let you take your straps Fold them over themselves, like so, so that way they're just nice and compact. And you're just going to tuck them in, like so. This is going to give you a nice looking rug that isn't going to, and these straps aren't going to get caught in anything if they're squared away like this. And so if you don't have these little scrunchy bands on it, what you can use is tape, like this one right here. It's the exact same process, you just tape it instead of using an elastic band to keep it in place. And when you're picking your tape color, pick something subdued, so like a nice black duct tape or electrical tape, or something olive drab or coyote. So when you got your camel back nice and mounted on your rug, like right, right here, you're gonna have a spare hose lying around, and this hose can go anywhere when you're rocking. So what you can do is you can take a carabiner of some sort and hook it onto your shoulder strap on your ruck. This will let you put your camel back hose in it and then your hose is always quick and easy, easy to access on your ruck now. Alright, so after you've got your ruck packed, there should be any straps loose. Some of them don't have these bands, so use a, a dark colored duct tape to wrap them up and tape them. So after you packed your rug, as you know, we packed uniforms and lighter objects that you're not going to use towards the bottom, and then we have our boots and our heavier objects towards the top. So the reason for that being, while you're rucking, it's hard on your back if you put the heavier objects towards the bottom, because as you might expect, it puts a lot of strain on your lower back, and eventually you start to get hunched over. So keeping the weight centered high up on your back allows you to keep your center of gravity more towards your center of gravity and it's easier for you to move for long periods of time. But a good way to tell if your, if your ruck is uh, correctly packed in terms of the center of gravity is when you stand it up, it should stand up on its own. So if you're just tipping over pretty easily, then you know that you probably need to adjust some things inside the ruck. All right, one thing you're going to want to not do with your ruck is back flap security. Like what I'm doing right now. This is not a good position to be fighting in. What you do want to do is you want to be in a good fighting position. Like this, if you're just pummeling it momentarily, where your weapon is trained, and if I need to get up, I can just go get up and go. Or, if I'm going to be in a position for a decent amount of time, you can use the ruck as a aiming platform and some light cover. Alright, so another thing that you're not going to want to do is drop your ruck. The only exception to this is if you take contact, which we'll show you in a second.
But don't do this. If you're in garrison or even in the field, don't do this. Man, I'm ready for launch. So when you want to set your rep down, instead of dropping it, set it down neatly. And if you even want to take the extra step, spin it away from you. So that if you take contact or you need to move quickly, there's a trick that you can use. Put both your arms into the straps, elbow deep. Lift your up over your head, and you're ready to move. All right. So if you do, if you take contact while you're moving with your ruck on, you have these on the strap, and what you want to do is grab these. These buttons will come off. There you go, your ruck's off. Don't do that unless you take contact. Man, those three days in the field were long. That ruck was long. I need to change my uniforms because I stay in the road. I'm not even in the artillery. Boxing gloves. Oh, wait, maybe this is it. Ah! My 20 copies of World War II and the Army. Where is my uniform even? Pack what you need, don't pack unnecessary crap. 